Well, praise be to God. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. We're here once again. We're talking about faith for our times. And today, we'd like to talk, to talk about proof. It's real and ours. Okay? So once again, let me read uh, our foundation verses from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 to 5. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world, but that he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? If we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, if we believe that he died for us and rose again from the grave for us, that he paid for the ransom that we're supposed to pay, and that because of what he has done, we don't have to do it, but just trust in him, then we are born of God. God adopts us as his children. We can call God as our father. And he gives us the faith that we need in order to live the life uh, that he wants us to live on the earth. And, and that thing that he's given to us is faith. And according to the Holy Scriptures, faith itself is the victory. Faith gets the victory while we are living on the earth. Okay? And like I said, uh, we're dealing with proof. We need proof when something is not apparent or it's not seen at the moment. Which brings me to the first part of our uh, lesson. Faith is the proof of that which is not seen. Faith is the proof of that which is not seen. Well, the last time we talked about faith being the substance of things so forth. It gives substance, reality, tangibility to the things we hope for. Uh, today we'll, we're going to look at the second part of Hebrews 11.1. 1. Let me just read this from the New King James. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, evidence of things not seen. Okay, It is the evidence of things that, that's not seen. Evidence basically is proof. And looking at uh, dictionary.com's definition, one of the definitions, he says, Proof is evidence sufficient to establish a thing as true or to produce belief in its truth. In other words, uh, it is something that, you know, that can stand uh, investigation, something that can stand examination, something that proves something to place. Like, for example, let's say um, you, 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 you're coming home to your home, you know, in, in your home, your your, uh, your sons are there, or maybe you're going to a dormitory, okay? You you studied late at night in, in, in uh, the library, and so you're going back to your dormitory with uh, your friends who are supposed to be there, either sleeping or studying, but when you get in, okay, uh, you don't see them, but you see from the table, uh, uh, which plays the part of the living area, you see uh, bottles of beer, uh, you see uh, pieces of uneaten sandwiches, okay? And in the dining area, you've seen uh, plates uh, uh, that were used to hurriedly make up certain things, and you see other pieces of, uh, other pieces of glasses and and, and uh, uh, things that you need in order to have a party. But apparently there's nobody there. You didn't see the party take place, but you believe something took place, why? Because there is evidence that something took place, a party of sorts. Now some people can say, well, what if they just arranged that for you to think? Why would they arrange something like that, okay? Well, maybe they have this, uh, goal to become the greatest pranksters in the world so maybe they can do that but normally you can assume by what you've seen that there was some kind of a party and somehow they brought it out of the house okay so you can tell them okay how was the party how'd you know you weren't there well i saw the evidence of the party i saw the proof that you had a party here i may not have seen the party take place i may not have uh, participated in that but I know that a party took place because the plates were there, uh, the bottles were there, uh, half-eaten sandwiches were there, half-eaten food were there, and things like that. So that's proof. 
it proves or establishes that something took place or a thing is true. And normally it's not hard to prove the reality of something that is seen and tangible. Okay? I mean, if you can see it, you can, some people say, if I can see it, I can believe it. All right? If I can hold it, then I can believe it. Some people even want to use this in the area of prayer. They, they will say, well, I believe that the prayer is answered when I can actually see and feel in my hands the answer. Okay? Well, the problem is when you're dealing with prayer, you're dealing with God's realm. You're dealing in the area of the unseen. Okay? Remember our creed? I believe in God. Okay? We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Of, invis of the visible and the invisible. So there are invisible things. And God, when you're dealing in the realm of God, you're dealing with things that are not seen. Uh, faith deals with unseen things. And faith itself becomes the evidence of, of the unseen. Now, let me look at Hebrews 11, uh, verse 1 from the Amplified Version. This is what it says. Now faith is the assurance the title deed, the confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen. Now look what it says here. It is the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be seen by the physical senses. It's like saying, well, I believe that God is real, but not, can you see him with your physical eyes? Normally you can. Can you hear him with your physical ears? Normally you can. Can you grasp him with your uh, physical hands? Normally you can't. Doesn't register in our five physical senses, but our faith tells us that he's real. Okay, And our faith is based on the evidence that God has given us, which is His Word. Okay, God has given us His Word, and that's the evidence that we need in order to believe in the impossible, in order to believe in the unseen. Faith is convinced of the reality of the invisible. For example, if I ask God uh, to provide for my needs, especially uh, during this particular time, uh, uh, where, where, where we, we want to be able to work but because of the restrictions you are restricted and there, there are debts that need to be paid there are things that need to be bought and purchased and things like that and you know where do you get your provisions so you ask God based on his word God you said that you would supply my need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus and because of this I ask this from you I believe you've heard my prayer. I believe my needs are met. What's your basis that your needs are met? You don't see the money yet. Okay? But remember, faith comprehends as fact that which is not yet seen. Okay? Faith is convinced of the reality of the invisible. You don't see the provisions yet, but your faith is convinced of that. That is your, your proof that you have it. Faith understands as fact something which is beyond our physical senses. Also, it mentions in Hebrews 11, uh, 1 here, that faith is the title deed of the things we hope for. When you have the title deed, you possess the land to which that title deed points to. In other words, if you're believing God for something and it's not there yet, some people say, well, it's not yours yet because it's not in your hands yet. How can you say that the healing is yours? You still feel bad. How can you say that the provision is yours? You still don't see the money. Well, you have the title deed. Okay? When you have that, you have what the title deed is pointing to, which is the blessing that you are believing God for. Okay? Um, for example, it says here, in uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse uh, 14 to 15. Now, this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions 
that we have asked of him. Now take note of the condition. If we ask him something according to his will. Okay? So how do we get to know the will of God? Well, if we know the word of God, the word of God basically points out to the will of God. If we ask something that is in accordance to the principles of God's word. Okay? Then we are asking something that is in accordance to his will. And the Holy Scripture is telling us this. If you ask something that is in accordance to the will of God, okay, he says, then we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. What he's saying here is this, that if we ask according to his word, okay, then consider your petition as good as already answered. Okay, consider the petition answered. Consider the prayer answered even though you can't see the answer yet okay uh, again from the expanded Bible uh, which we read earlier it says faith means being sure being assured of or the tangible reality or the sure foundation of the things we hope for and knowing that something is real even if we do not see it okay because we put our faith in the word of God because we ask something that according to his will God says consider it yours consider it done consider it. it's a done deal even though you can't see it yet see second thing I'd like for us to see here is this faith is needed while the answer is not yet seen so let's say you ask it's good sometimes if we get the answer immediately but sometimes we don't get answers immediately so while we're you know we're, we're, we're not yet experiencing the answer we stand in faith for that thing okay we need faith while the answer is not yet seen remember faith deals with the invisible faith deals with the unseen okay faith stands in the place of what you're believing for while it's not yet seen okay so while it's not yet there your faith takes the place of that thing that's not yet there Okay, while the answer is not seen yet, you hold on to the proof, which is your faith in God's word. It's like you know, it's couples when they, uh, when when they uh, when they uh, are able to conceive a baby, eventually the wife goes to the doctor. They have this ultrasound thing which takes a picture of the baby that is still in the womb, and while the baby is still in the womb, uh, you hold on to the proof, which is the ultrasound picture. But then one day, the baby comes out of the womb, okay? You don't need the ultrasound picture as much because now you have the actual baby, all right? So hold on to your faith in God's Word that you're healed while waiting for your healing. Hold on to your faith in God's promises of supply while the provisions aren't there yet and you're still waiting for them. When that which is unseen becomes seen, then you don't need the evidence for that anymore. In other words, while I'm believing God for my provisions and it's not there yet, my faith has to take the place of that. I praise God in faith. Lord, I believe you heard my prayer, so I'm believing that you've supplied my needs. My faith is there. But the moment the money or the provisions come, I don't need faith for that anymore because it's actually there. You don't need faith for what you can see. Okay, it's like what Jesus Christ said to Thomas. You believe because you can see, but blessed are those who have not yet seen, and yet they believe. See, uh, according to St. Augustine, faith is to believe what we do not see. And the reward of this faith is to see what we believe. So while we're waiting for that, our faith takes the place of that which we're believing God for. And because it's a title deed, it's ours. It is being made real. It's being given substance until one day that which we're believing God for begins to manifest in our lives. Then we don't need faith for that anymore because we have the real thing. Amen. Well, praise be to God. I hope you've been blessed today, been given an understanding of how faith operates in our life so that you might be able to hold on to this even though things are not as we expected them to be we believe in the lord our god in the meantime the lord bless you and keep you 
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I'll see you next week.